Look, every now and again, I like to challenge random people using a team of mons that aren't really considered great. But they do have some really cool niche opportunities to show that these things can actually be pretty good in the right hands. So, looking at my opponent's team, they've brought some absolute power, and honestly, this team is extremely scary for me. But you know what actually can be definitely scarier, and that's using the internet without a VPN. Shout out to today's sponsor Surfshark VPN for making this happen. Look, using a VPN is like using a spear team with WonderGuard. There's truly not a safer option, especially in 2023. A virtual private network keeps you safe and private by masking what you do online with some crazy cool perks. Using Surfshark, traveling is insanely easier in multiple ways. First of all, you ever wanted to watch something other than the usual stuff on Netflix? If you pop on the Surfshark, boom, you've traveled across the world, you have access to any other country's Netflix shows. Also, price discrimination is real, and airlines do it all the time. Companies are literally tracking you to increase prices when you're shopping for flights, but with the VPN, they know nothing, and you can grab yourself the best pricing possible. And that's barely scraping the surface of what you can do with Surfshark. One of my actual favorite parts is that with a single subscription, you can actually use unlimited devices, which is crazy. Plus, to make you basically untouchable, they even have a Surfshark antivirus add-on that allows you to get real-time protection and keep all your devices virus-free. Get yourself an exclusive Black Friday deal with promo code Hayden and get an additional six months for free. Go ahead and hit that link in the description if you haven't already and check it out. And let's get into the battle. So my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Masquerade. Now, this is not good news because this thing only means one thing, and that is sticky web so essentially i'm gonna have to deal with my team being slower for the entire match which is not ideal but what is ideal is intimidate actually does give big tiggly a little special attack boost and that ladies and gentlemen is the face of no mercy so they do go for the sticky web as we expect and at this point i'm gonna go ahead and go for the thunder wave essentially i'm trying to cover for the fact that i may be getting swept by a quiver dance masquerade and Wigglytuff is not letting that happen on his watch, so I do get the pair there luckily. And at this point, I don't really know what this thing wants to do, so I'm just going to set up my Stealth Rock here. I am now faster because the boy is paralyzed, and we get up the rocks, which is going to be pretty nice for this match. So, they actually end up going for the Stun Spore, and now we're just both sitting here looking paralyzed and slow, and we're just having a weird slow time. Overall, I am of course not willing to switch out. That is because this little Marshmallow does have a special attack boost, and we are making the most out of that. Uh, so with me being paralyzed, they actually are faster, and they reveal the Air Slash, which does in fact flinch me. Luckily though, Big Tiggly is in fact Big Ass Tiggly, and we are able to take it super nicely as I'm kind of a special wall. Uh, they're just going to continue to fire off Air Slashes and try to get flinches as I do get off a Dazzling Gleam. And with my boost, it is going to knock this thing down to its Focus Ash. With a crit, likely did not matter. Also, Game Freak, give Wigglytuff Moon Blast. For real, I'm over here using Dazzling Gleam like a freaking caveman. We have better technology for this. Hire me, please. Anyway, uh, I'm actually going to end up going for the Wish now. I know that they're just going to try to slowly whittle me down with the Air Slash, and if I can get a Wish up, which luckily I do, uh, next turn we're going to be all the way back to full, and the Tiggly is a threat. I swear to God, people will be sleeping on Wigglytuff, but I, it almost always makes a difference. So, uh, the Wish being up there is amazing. All I have to now do is just get a Dazzling Gleam off, which will finish this thing off. Uh, they go for an air slash, and of course, you know, I flinch again. But it is fine. Our wish has come true, and it does bring us, like, back to full. So, kind of a hilarious start to this match, as after the leftovers, we're sitting extremely healthy and plump over here. Little marshmallow boy just standing around having a time. Luckily, the flinch nonsense will be over as I take this next air slash, do not flinch, and break through my para, and I'm able to finish this thing off with a dazzling gleam. So, I'm sitting in a spot where... I luckily was able to get up my Stealth Rock, finish off the Masquerade, and uh, I do still have Sticky Web on my side of the field, but I'm going to be able to try to work around it as my team isn't really based around speed in general, except for one thing, which you will see. So, now they decide to go into Urshifu. Now, this thing is an absolute menace, uh, but I do have the Dazzling Gleam coverage. I'm thinking they probably just have something for me, but I'll be damned if I'm going to switch out Wiggly with an attack or a special attack boost. They do, in fact, just have the Iron Head, and I am not bulky on the physical side. Plus, have you seen this dude's muscles? Thing's an absolute monster, so that does take care of me, unfortunately. But what I can now do is bring in the absolute god that is Sheldon. Mad Cargo looks absolutely amazing in this game, and he is ready to get some stuff going. So, here is essentially the plan. I come in, I do touch the sticky web, which actually activates my white herb, which is going to bring my speed back to normal. So, normally the herb is there to bring my defenses back to normal after a shell smash, which uh, is exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to go for the Terra Water, which is going to allow me to essentially take a fighting move from this thing, at least hopefully. So I put a little bit of water on my head, and I'm ready to see if I can get Mag Cargo going. Now this thing has a pretty interesting niche here. So, he goes for the close combat. I do barely live it, but more importantly, it's actually going to activate 
my weak armor ability, which does give us a nice little plus two in speed. So weak armor, our shell is in absolute shambles right now, especially because now I'm literally going for a shell smash. But what's most important is I have a speed boost from the weak armor and from uh, the shell smash. So look, Mag Cargo is now faster than like their entire team, which is probably something very few people have ever said before. But we're going to see basically if we can push the limits of this bad boy. And Essentially now, with that special attack boost, I can just finish this thing off with a Terra Blast. And watching a Mag Cargo kill an Urshifu is not something I knew that I needed today, but uh, hopefully that's a fun one for you guys to see. Anyway, down goes the Urshifu, huge threat out of the way, and now we get to see what their answer is going to be to the absolute beast that is turbo fucking speed Mag Cargo. As they end up going into Caligrex Shadow Rider. This thing it's straight up two Pokemon in one. Honestly, unfair if you ask me. My dude brought seven Pokemon. But I'm going to end up going for the Flamethrower. It's actually my highest damage output at this point because I do keep the stab from the fire. Unfortunately, they do just barely live the Flamethrower. Uh, unfortunately, you know, we're not able to quite compete with the fucking Legendary. And down goes Mag Cargo. But hey, honestly, I killed literally an Urshifu and almost a Calibrex Shadow Rider. And I was able to get the amount of chip on this thing to the point where I should be able to take care of it. Uh, sadly, of course, it does get its Grim Nay ability, which boosts its special attack, and that makes it uh, even more of a threat than it already is. But uh, the one mon that I do have for this is going to be the Cacturn. I'm thinking maybe I actually force them out, uh, them predicting a Sucker Punch. I am, of course, going to be a special attacking one instead, though, but they just stay in and they go for an Astral Barrage, and luckily Cacturn is going to be able to live that, but just barely as an energy ball is going to finish it off. So, two very scary uh, legendary dudes out of the way. And now I've got a Cacturn and a Dream, as the Dream is actually real here, because they end up going into the Dancing Peacock. And I'm thinking to myself, there's no shot they go for the water move here, right? To finish me off, because I'm water absorbed. They actually do go for the Aqua Step. Uh, and this is the benefit of using Pokemon that no one ever uses, because they probably just didn't know, that, or at least forgot about the water absorb, which Honestly, a lot of people do. Uh, so Cacturn just absolutely sucks up that good nourishment and finishes him off <laughs> with an energy ball. So uh, it's honestly just fun to see people handle these Pokemon that uh, are not often in competitive. So with that thing out of the way, now they have a Fluttermane. And this thing is going to be Protosynthesis with a special attack boost. And I'm thinking to myself, how can I possibly beat this thing? I honestly don't know. But I know that Cacturn is not going to be able to do it. So unfortunately, I do have to go down there to a Moonblast. And with a special attack boost, this thing's going to have pretty much damage on almost everything. So what I decided to do here is essentially go into the Arbok. Now this thing isn't super useful for the remainder of the match. The reason being is because their final two Pokemon is going to be this Fluttermane and the Ogre Pond Rock type in the back. So I decided to go into Arbok. The reason is I just want to see if they are carrying the Psychic coverage, which, you know, yeah, they are. They go for the Psy Shock and with the special attack boost. Arbok stands, you know, pretty much no chance. They do get the crit, so I'm going to blame it on the crit there, as Arbok has been wronged by pretty much the best Pokemon in the game. But uh, now my only possible answer is going to be Pyroar. Now, I know that Pyroar can at least probably take an attack from this thing, um, but I'm not going to have quite enough damage to be able to knock it down uh, with just a flamethrower. So essentially what I can do here is try to chip it as much as possible, and then it comes down to Swalot. And Swalot does have a trick up his sleeve that hopefully we can make happen. So they go for the Psy Shock there. I am able to take it, fire off a Flamethrower in return, but unfortunately they did do over half to me. Uh, so it is going to end up finishing me off. They just decide to go for the Thunderbolts, and down goes the Pyroar. So this thing has taken enough damage to the point where I'm thinking, hey, actually, Swalot has a pretty good chance to finish this thing off with a Poison Jab, and I have the bulk to be able to take an attack. So... That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to get all caught up in some sticky web as I'm already about slow as shit anyway, so it literally does not matter. And I'm going to go for this last ditch effort, which is the poison jab. So they go for the Psy Shock. Swalot is thick as hell. I'm able to live it with 23 HP, which is amazing. And a poison jab does kill the Flutter Mate. So now we find ourselves in a situation where it's one versus one. They have the rock type Ogre Pond, and I have a pile of sludge and a Custap Berry. So. If you're unfamiliar with the Custap Berry, essentially what it does is allows Pokemon that are naturally slower to move first. So what I'm going to do here is go for the Destiny Bond. They are basically forced to knock me out here. And if I can get the Destiny Bond off with the Custap Berry, their Ogre Pond is also going to die. So that's exactly what happens. I do move first. Go for that Destiny Bond as uh, Ogre Pond's basically just sitting over there looking confused as hell. 
does go for the Ivy Cudgel and <laughs> ends up knocking out the Swalot, but it is also going to go down with the Destiny Bond. So while he does knock out my Pokemon first and technically gets the win, I'm going to call that a win on Swalot's end because it's honestly just hilarious and there's no way that guy saw that coming. So overall, I just thought it was kind of a fun game uh, to see these Pokemon against Pokemon they have no business playing against, but let me know if you guys enjoyed. Leave a like on the video as always, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.